This video is for you if you just ended a relationship and you're freaking out. You have anxiety, your mind is racing, you don't know what to do, it's safe to say you're a mess. Then this video is for you. Stay tuned. I'm Alan Robarge. Welcome to the new love addiction where we're not talking about addiction, we're talking about attachment injuries and healing from attachment trauma. And on this video, let's talk about grief, uh, but not so much conceptually or an idea that you have been working with for some time as a kind of ongoing grief. Let's talk about the immediacy of a relationship ending and feeling that the world has come crashing down on you. So if you're watching this video, chances are that you are in the immediacy, you are in the throes, you are in the talons, you are in the fire of this grief. Your whole world is being turned upside down. And I'm assuming that you're feeling this urgency, this incredible intensity to find relief, to right the wrong, to change things, to uh, perhaps be reunited with your partner. What if this, what if this, can we get together? I need to send a text, I need to write, I need, or maybe you know the relationship's over, you ended it, you know the reality that it's over, it's, you, there's not a possibility of negotiating with yourself, negotiating with your partner, bargaining to create yet again another chapter, another round. Well, let's change, let's change, let's go to couples counseling, let's do this, let's do that. It's gonna be different. If you're watching this video, if you found me perhaps through other videos as well, and know that I like to explore attachment injuries and attachment trauma, and if you have a history of some unhealed, unintegrated attachment trauma that still gets activated and triggered when relationships end, you probably have a abandonment fear. You have this intense uh, struggle around feeling rejected. You're no longer being chosen and it is going to register in your nervous system and in your body as this incredible panic, just this outrageous life or death feeling that there's something is fundamentally wrong. And uh, let's acknowledge this is not going away this evening. It's not going away in the next couple days. Uh, usually what happens is our nervous system gets uh, blown out, just, just gets completely provoked at the knowing, at the truth that the relationship is over, the partner is left, you have asked the partner to leave, uh, as much strength as it took for you to uh, finally get to a place of saying, yes, it's over, and then you're still even in your mind, you keep bouncing around this ping pong mind, well, let's try to get back together, let's try to get back together. If you have an unresolved attachment injury, you're not only going to be feeling this incredible uh, intense grief from the reality of the current situation, chances are it's going to be exaggerated through your nervous system being provoked and it's going to link to this history in your family. Uh, it could happen beyond your family, but usually it has to do with our history through childhood where our parents were not quite able to be fully there for us. And it has been coded in our nervous system, this profound fear around being left. So that in fact, a relationship that ends the grief is not only like being run over by a car, now it's like being run over by a car, a train, and a bus. You, you get this magnified intensity. So if you're watching this video and you are feeling like a mess and you're freaking out, let's focus on, let's be a little rational, let's be a little logical, 
Uh, let's return to basics and be very simple here. Let's, let's take some simplistic approach and breathe. You need to slow down. You need to remind yourself of reality by saying, what are you going to do tonight to focus on tonight, to focus on basics, to focus on today? What are you going to do for the rest of your day? Can you get some water? Can you get some green vegetables? Can you focus on doing your laundry? Now is not the time to do your taxes. Now is not the time to take on some new project like, uh, you know, recarpeting the living room. Your world as you know it is going to turn everything upside down. And chances are you're going to experience a lot of contradictions and a lot of opposites. So you might be very hyper-focused and super scrutinized. You want to read eight books at once and you're going to scrutinize every little piece of information, uh, gathering, mapping out what happened in your history in this relationship. He said this, she did this, this happened, you know, this out of the other. And you might journal it down and, you know, write it and just constantly be processing. So your mind will be in overdrive. Or you're going to experience the, experience the opposite where you can't focus at all. You, you could be at the job, you could be on the job at your work, and you just cannot get through. It's going to feel like living, like you're moving through molasses, you're moving through peanut butter, you're just moving, you're in slow motion. Life is going to feel very surreal. And chances are your mind is going to move into a kind of trance state. Uh, that everything is different. The surrealness, the weirdness, the you're just not yourself. You could be in shock and this flood of hormones in your nervous system, this flood of, it, it registers as physical pain, that your body is in physical pain and in addition to aches, you know, joints aching or legs aching or muscles aching. Um, physically, your chest could hurt. Physically, your heart could hurt. Uh, your diaphragm, uh, the seat of emotion uh, right in the center where your solar plexus is and where you're breathing. I mean, you could feel literally crushed like, you know, an elephant uh, had just sat on you. So all of these symptoms um, are just a profound, overwhelming experience of the body going through some major changes. And you might find that you're sleeping a lot. You might find that you can't sleep. You, you might fall asleep, but then let's say there's that, let's say you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and it's like your brain turns on into emergency mode and the moment that you wake up, you cannot at all fall back to sleep because your mind is just going to grab on and there's going to be this profound sense of fear that something is not right. Something is not right. So for the sake of this video, we're not really talking about grief in the long term. We're really talking about this moment. We're talking about today. We're talking about this evening. Uh, we're talking about tomorrow to begin to think about a plan, a very basic, simple plan. You got to function. You got to be able to take a shower. You got to be able to eat your food. You got to be able to get to work. And you need to make things easy for yourself. You need some help. You need to ask friends. Uh, you need to uh, maybe buy some more pre-made food that you just put in the microwave. Uh, drink more water, just very basics. Drink more water. So in this moment, if you're uh, feeling anxious, if you're feeling the panic, Let's slow down and take a breath. And one thing you can do, and it's going to sound incredibly simple, it's going to sound so obvious, is you can name your reality, which is saying, I feel horrible. I just feel so horrible right now. And you 
respond to yourself with a very simple affirmation and you say, yes, that, yes, that's true. I feel horrible. I feel, I am so hurting right now. And you respond in the affirmative, very simple stuff. You say, yeah, th this is crushing. I am so wildly overwhelmed and consumed. Uh, the word I use for myself is I'm on fire. I, I'm just, you know, I'm roasting. I'm on fire in this world of grief uh, that it brings me into. And when this happens, uh, it requires, you are a warrior in this moment. I mean, you need an incredible amount of energy and an incredible amount of skill to wrestle with your mind and to grapple with the profound waves of intense sadness and um, shame and um, deep, deep, inconsolable grief. I've always loved that word. There was a poem, forgive me, I'm gonna share an image that is not a very pretty image. And it's a bit of a violent image, so I'm sorry. I'm giving you a little bit of a heads up about it. I don't really see it as literal, like any good beautiful poetry, it's metaphorical. There is this poem that I read, I don't even remember in this moment who wrote it or what it is, but it says the gr this grief is inconsolable. This grief is so inconsolable. And it's like, it's like a knife being stabbed in the side of a goat. Now, that's a sad image of, and it's an image of violence regarding the goat, but if we can move beyond the literal and look at it as the metaphor of the poem, it's this piercing feeling, this just overwhelmed feeling. Um, and to me, the image of a goat, also there's an innocence about that because it's a, it's a, a farm animal or a domesticated animal. And um, it just implies this, you know, impossible, this impossible piercing of what do you do, what do you do next? You know, what, what do you do when the knife of grief has pierced your heart and now you're supposed to get up in the morning and go to work and you're supposed to talk on the phone and you're supposed to uh, act normal and you know that you can't act normal. So in this moment, let's slow down, let's take a breath. And what's very helpful is to focus on your body and to do a body scan and to take a breath and notice your arms and your legs and your stomach and spine and your feet and your fingers and your toes and incorporating your senses, bringing your awareness to your senses can be a really helpful way to take a break from getting lost in the looping of the mind chatter. What if this, what if this, what if this, he said this, I said this, he said this, I should have the, oh, should I get in the car and drive? I think I should get in the car and go there. And you know, this just goes on and on and on. So one way to, to, to attempt to slow that down and to pull yourself out of the mind chatter is to focus on your senses. And there are very simple things that you can do, like make a hot cup of tea, even if it's the middle of August and it's 90 degrees out, you make a hot cup of tea and you just put your hands on the mug and you, you breathe. And that is the, ex that, that's your work. I mean, that's the extent of how life is slowed down and it is not business as usual. It is, you are not gonna accomplish everything you wanna accomplish. You're not gonna be this, you know, a uh, high functioning, uh, productive person who has 85 responsibilities. When you're in this level of grief and the relationship has ended and the world, the, the rug has been pulled out from you under you and the world has come crashing down on you, you have to accept that that is the reality in which you're living right now. It will change, a new reality will come in, but it's probably not gonna change this evening. And we have to accept that we have no energy in this place. It is going to make you feel drained and exhausted and confused and tired. So focus on your senses. And if you can get a hot cup of tea, hold the hot cup of tea, 
and you're just noticing what it feels like on the palms, uh, what it feels like on your forearms. Uh, you can even smell the tea. You're inviting, you know, the scent of the sense of smell, uh, smelling the scent of tea. Uh, let's assume that it's some kind of hibiscus tea, so it has this berry smell to it, um, a very bright berry smell. And you're noticing the heat, and you breathe. And we we want to practice these moments of being able to exhale, and these moments of allowing yourself to surrender to giving up and that it's over the relationship is over now of course how do i know you know many people will you know, many people will say but i want to get back together i need, i really need to try you know i need to write a letter i need to text i need to drive over there and what maybe maybe you know you're the one but for most people but there's a point at which you know you i mean you know, even though you want to fight it even though you want it to be different even though you're having a temper tantrum even though you're kicking and screaming even though that you're you know angry and you're trying to be manipulative and get back together whatever it is whatever your flavor is of how you do it there's a point at which we look in the mirror or we just it's that quiet moment, you're by yourself, you know it's over. I mean, this is really over. And the thing about grief is sometimes there's, there's not that much to say. If you, you could have, I'm, I'm sure you've had the experience of someone, you know, a friend or a fa a, a, someone died and you're con you, you, you've been told that by the person that cares about that person who died. And you know in that moment, you, you don't know what to say. I mean, we, you, say you say something cordial and kind and empathetic. You know, I feel for you, or, you know, I hope you're okay. Uh, please call me, I'm available. You know, but after you say all those things, and then the person just looks at you and they're crying and they say, you know, how the hell am I going to go on now that this person has died? Or it doesn't have to be died. I mean, it could be, you know, the person, they, their relationship ended. They, they're they getting a divorce. Their their marriage has failed. And they look at you and they're crying and they, just, and they say, I'm just so sad. And And sometimes in those moments, all you can do is just look at the person and you try to breathe with them. You try to nod. You, you, you try to, to you know, in, inside, the message inside is, one, you're saying to yourself, I don't know what to say. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. And then the other part, he just says, stay present. Just, you know, just be here for my friend. Just, yeah, the, your, your life will never be the same since this experience. This, this is a major defining event that is going to send you into a different trajectory. It is going to create a new chapter. And uh, it, it is throwing you into groundlessness. And in those moments, if you don't know what to say, you just look at your friend. So that's what you need to do for yourself. When you get the cup of tea, when you are able to look out the window and sit and, and to, to not engage in the repetitious speedy mind the churning the manipulation i got it you know the story so the phrase is drop the story the the chatter this happened this happened and this happened and this and maybe this and he did this and then she did this and the way story 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 what we try to do is we try to break it and you can break it by coming back to your body and focusing on your senses. What do you see in this moment? You pick an object around the room. So I see the book with the with the red the red book cover. The book is sitting on the bookshelf. It's right there. I'm noticing the book. I'm noticing the light, how it's hitting the book. I'm noticing the the words written on the book, the font, the style of the writing. And then we take a breath, we come back to the breath, and we come back to the body, your arms, your legs, your stomach, your spine, your feet, your fingers, your toes. You take a breath, and then you do it over again. You say, well, what else do I see? Let's come back to the room, let's look around, 
You say, well, you know, I notice, I notice uh, the quarter. There's a, there's a bowl here and there's a quarter in the bowl. So I'm just noticing the shininess of the quarter. Now, I know this sounds a bit simplistic and I know that this sounds at, at times could be, you know, I, I'm so devastated by my life falling apart and feeling uh, this intense, not only the current grief, but the abandonment wound being triggered that how I don't really care about a stupid quarter on the counter. I don't care about the book. So I'm aware that some of this might just be going through the motions. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to interrupt the trance. We're trying to interrupt the repetitious trance of staying stuck in the mind chatter and have moments where we break, where we come out just a little bit. We can find a gap and it's in those gaps that there's some surrender, there's some clarity, there's some exhale. Uh, we could even say that there's a release from suffering. It usually is going to only last for five seconds or for 10 seconds or if you're luck lucky 10 minutes and then it comes back. So arms, legs, stomach, spine, feet, fingers, toes, take a breath, notice your body, notice the room around you, notice what time of day it is, notice if there's sun coming through the window, uh, notice if you can see the wind out, out the window, if you can see the sky and begin to breathe and just notice your breath. And we again, we affirm the simple reality of saying it's over. I'm crushed. I don't like it. I don't like this one bit. And I might even have a temper tantrum. I might fight it. I might, I might act out. I might need to try to get back together. Should I call? Should I wait if he calls? Or she'll call? Or this will happen? And you try to come back and you take a break you t by taking a breath and by returning to your senses. Now, time will help this. Uh, you'll find some release through time passing, probably not by tomorrow. But in addition, you need to bring attention. It's time and attention. It's allowing uh, some participation. And life is going to feel very different than the way it has up to this point. You will not be able to function on the same level that you have been functioning. Think about basics, back to basics. Can you get enough water? Can you eat some green vegetables? Can you call some friends to help you do the laundry? Can you uh, prepare for your next day? Like make life a little easier for yourself. Pack your lunch tonight so you don't have to rush and scramble to pack it in the morning. Or maybe just accept you're gonna buy lunch all week. You just have to buy lunch out. You don't even have the ability to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. I hope that this video is helpful. I wanted to try to just simply state the truth, to state the reality, uh, to meet you where you're at, which is you're grieving. You're a mess. You really are struggling with this. And to say, well, that's normal. We get it. And chances are, if you have an attachment injury, it's all being very exaggerated. And so there's going to be some unresolved grief from the past, some unresolved grief from previous relationships, some unresolved grief from family, and it's all getting activated. The image that I like to use is, you know how when a raindrop uh, is on the windshield and this drop of water is moving down the windshield and there's other drops of water and the the nature of the property of water is that they are um, i don't know if the proper word is magnetized but they're attracted to each other and they will they will consolidate they will they will just move together and i like to think that grief is the same way that if you have this current 
topical grief, this ending that is very painful and crushing. And think of that like a, a drop of water on the windshield. And you have other losses in your life, in your psyche, in you know that have uh, that are unintegrated. You have you have these other drops of water that represent other losses that need attention. They're going to consolidate and can very much in exaggerate. I almost said the word enhance, as a, you know, enhance implies you know, you know, a better version of of grieving. And I don't mean it like that. I more mean that it it it's hard enough. You know, this this ending, this devastation, this anxiety, this feeling crushed is hard enough. Uh, however, if you have a history of attachment injuries that you haven't fully integrated or been able to heal and it's even possible you won't be conscious of it but in a way you're you're pre preconditioned to experience loss all the more intensely than other people so for people who ha have not had the level of attachment trauma that you have had they can experience an ending and their brain and their nervous system and the flood of hormones that get activated um, are in some ways within a range that are manageable. But for those of us who have an attachment injury, attachment trauma that is unintegrated and our body is preconditioned to uh, be very quickly triggered by the intensity of loss and that we don't have a reasonable range to experience it. In fact, we get blown out very quickly and what perhaps uh, should be experienced as, let's say on a scale of zero to 10, should be experienced as a level six grief, we just experience it at a level 10. And it, it just kicks your butt. It is exhausting. So empathy to you, take care of yourself, keep it simple, Focus on your senses, focus on the present moment, focus on your body, and name the reality from a simple place. And the reality is, this is tough, uh, you are struggling, and let's focus on getting to bed at a, at a reasonable hour tonight. And let's take a break from the story, take a break from the speediness and all the, you know, uh, all the details, the story, the story, the story, and you try to come back and say, for the next half hour, I'm going to surrender to the impossibleness of this. A, a phrase I use or an image that I like is that uh, being crushed by the ending of grief, of uh, saying goodbye to someone that you love, the person that you love the most, and to let in that reality is so confusing and so just completely goes against your whole being that it's like reversing your blood flow. It's like right now I'm gonna say, well, can you reverse your blood flow? Uh, can you just totally change how your blood is flowing through your body? And just, you know, and, and as impossible as that sounds, that's usually how the brain experiences this ending. It just will register as, this is impossible. This can't end. I love this person so much. I'm so, crushed and yearning and, and feel this great deep desire, I must be with this person. For the sake of you and me and this video and what we're doing we're just, is we're saying, we're, we're interrupting that great, great desire and we're saying, no, you're not going to be with this person. It's over. And can you focus on the next half hour? Can you give yourself a break? Can you take a hot bath? Can you get some lavender oil or lavender soap or lavender lotion and uh, smell that scent? Come back to your senses. Light a candle and notice you know, the experience of just seeing the flame burning. Again, all of these things sound wildly simple because they are. And that's what we need right now. We need to focus on the simple basics. I hope that this was helpful and empathy to you. You are uh, hurting. So I get that. I know that you're hurting. Uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like this video. Uh, there are others similar to it on their way. I continue to make more videos. You can learn more about me at alanrobars.com. And until next time, thank you for watching the video.